And uh, the speaking of the Michigan State Spartans, they hosted for homecoming the Wisconsin Badgers, a team that you and I both know and hate very much. And uh, to my ultimate dumbfounded surprise, when the clock struck zero, Michigan State had more points than Wisconsin, Ryan. Yeah, it was, uh, uh, it was a fun game to watch. It was pretty frustrating. And for Michigan State, it you know, it's probably not going to be a turning point in the season, but it was the healthiest the defense had been since week one. We saw the defense play better than they had, or, you know, really since week two when they played, uh, when they sh- shut out Akron. Um, and we saw, you know, the offense – at least put up some points, you know, like they did last year. You know, went deep a few times to, to Coleman and Reed, and they were able to bring down the, you know, they were to bring down those 50-50 balls that seemed like more often than not. But you still had all the frustrations of a lot of stupid penalties for Michigan State. Um, oh, my God, it was, it was unbelievable, <laughs> the amount of penalties and the amount of times of screaming at my TV thinking the game's over <laughs> for them to – for them to mess it up. Not the game, but the play. And I thought the game was over too. And then Mel Tucker decided to do the worst last 10 seconds of a game. Uh, you know, I can never imagine calling the timeout and then thinking that they're going to try a quick pass or something, right? And, you know, try and get a first down. If not, bring their – instead they throw the ball all the way across the field, don't get the first down. Now they're on the opposite hash mark where they want to be, and the field goal unit is rushing onto the field. You, you get a bad snap, uh, and then Berenger has to try and, you know, recreate Little Giants, and it doesn't happen. He throws a pick. Uh, so, so it was unbelievably frustrating. Even the touchdown Jaden Reed threw to Keon Coleman in overtime, you know, it looked like it was going to be picked, and then Keon Coleman just went up and mossed that, that poor defender from, from Wisconsin. Um but yeah, so it was a lot, a lot of frustrations, uh, but a lot of you know a lot of excitement too. And then they finally got the win over a team, you know, it's not the Wisconsin that we've seen of old, but like hey, you know, it's, it's still Wisconsin, which is nice, and especially a team that has had as much sort of recent history um, that they've had with Michigan State. I look, I don't give a damn who they beat as long as the win number says six at the end of the year and we get to a bowl game. That's all I care about at this point because there's nothing else to play for. They ain't playing for no Big Ten championship. That definitely went out the window many losses ago. Uh, it was nice to see the losing streak snapped after four in a row. Uh, yeah, I'm with you. On, <laughs> I, still, I still have no idea what Mel Tucker was trying to do in those last 30 seconds of the football game. I really don't. I thought you had the play. You, you got what you wanted now. You got it on the left side of the field for a left-footed kicker. It's what you want. It's a better angle for him, you know, and he didn't use the timeout. You know, so, you know, I figured, or no, he didn't. I'm sorry. He did use the timeout, which is why I thought, okay, they're going to, they're going to kick it because yeah, there's a few seconds left on the clock, but Wisconsin ain't going down the length of the field in 25 seconds, you know, to score on this one. Like they just, like Mertz had not looked good all day. And the defense for Michigan State had looked a lot better and actually looking like a competent, at least defense. And so I thought everything was set up for a long kick to try and win the game before overtime you know, from that side of the field. And then they run this play where they throw it backwards and it's on the other side of the field. And and now you're rushing out there with 18 seconds left to try and get a kickoff. I don't understand what the point was. Like, I, I don't, I, I just don't get it. But it is amazing to see how two people can make a defense so much better. Xavier Henderson, Jacob Slate, they come in and now all of a sudden, we actually look like we know how to play defense. Michigan State d- has not looked at all like they knew how to play defense for the last four weeks. And all of a sudden, having Slade there, having Henderson there, and now the defense actually can at least fight back. Yes, they're not going to be shutting down people. We don't have shut down corners. It doesn't work that way. But just having a couple of guys who are really good at their job allows other things to happen. Jacoby Winman, we hadn't heard from him since week two. Well, guess what? There's a reason why. Slade had been gone, and so Winman had to pick up roles that weren't his that he'd like to do, and so he was able to go back to what the what he knows how to do, what he's more comfortable doing, and it made one hell of a difference. Once again, Big Ten Defensive Player of the Week for the third time this year, which has only been done six other times in the history of the Big Ten. No one's gotten to four. We'll see if somehow Winman can be the first, but just having guys that know what they're doing, especially leaders like Henderson, 
you know, to know what they're doing and actually lock down their position as well as being a leader on the field to help put guys in the right position to succeed. It made all the difference in the world. Yes, Wisconsin is not a great team this year and they're not going to blow the doors off anybody offensively. But we've been losing to teams who are blowing our doors off who really aren't blowing other people's doors off. So having some semblance of a defense, it was quite nice to see a very nice change of pace from what we've been used to the last month. Yeah, it was, uh, you know, it was, it was very nice. It was a very nice change of pace for Michigan State, and we, and we finally got the win. Hey, Ryan Griffin here. Thank you so much for watching today's episode of Griffin and Bats. Be sure to give us your thoughts in the comments below. Remember to click the bell to receive the latest notifications from DSN, and subscribe for breaking news, community blogs, polls, contests, and other content.